Hi, this is Jeffrey Gurian uh, for the Happiness Channel and I'm here to talk to you today about a bunch of things but I'm going to start out by talking about my new book my book on happiness that recently became a bestseller on Amazon and it's called Healing Your Heart by Changing Your Mind A Spiritual and Humorous Approach to Achieving Happiness There are so many things in the book that I want to talk about but probably one of the first things that I would address is I talked about stuttering because until I was in my 20s and even beyond I was a very severe stutterer I stuttered so badly that I couldn't even say my name Gurian was impossible for me to say and it was the bane of my existence um, it made life very uncomfortable for me and I remember when I was in college uh, I had a feeling it had something to do with the way I felt about myself and I made myself run for the president of the freshman class I went to a very big college um, and there, it was made up of about seven different high schools and I didn't know most of the kids and I decided that I was going to run for the president of the freshman class thinking that if I could win the election I wouldn't have to stutter anymore because you can't win an election if nobody votes for you and so if enough kids vote for you that must mean that they like you and then I just thought that I wouldn't have to stutter anymore I guess I had a feeling that it had something to do with how I felt about myself. So I had other kids act as my campaign managers to introduce me to kids that I didn't know because I wasn't able to say my own name. I couldn't say, hi, I'm Jeffrey Gurian. So they would introduce me and then once I got started I could speak. And um, as it turns out, I won the election. I was the president of the freshman class of Hunter College and I still stuttered and it was a great lesson for me. It taught me that outside validation doesn't work. It doesn't matter how many people tell you that you're fabulous and talented and wonderful and gorgeous. It matters what you think about yourself. And so that started uh, kind of a lifetime of work on myself, learning to change the way I thought. My parents had sent me for speech therapy and no one was able to help me. And one day I realized that I didn't stutter when I was alone, that I could go into a room by myself and speak perfectly. And every stutterer knows what words are difficult for them to say. Hard G's, hard D's, hard B's were very hard for me to say. But when I was alone in a room, I could say them perfectly. And I was given the grace to figure out that you cannot have a disability based on your location. A man with a limp limps in every room of his house. You can't go into a room and close the door and suddenly walk perfectly. But if I could speak perfectly when I was by myself, then that told me that there was really nothing wrong with me, that it was all in my head, that I created it for myself for some reason. Most stutterers start stuttering when they're about five or six years old. I think I started when I was about seven years old, which meant that I was already speaking for five years or so with no problem. But all of a sudden, I started to stutter. And, you know, what I, what I say when I work with people as an avocation, I work with people who stutter and I teach them how not to stutter. I teach them my technique. And um, I say that it isn't important to try and figure out exactly what the reason is, but it's important to examine all the possibilities. And so there was something going on in my life at the time that created the need for me to do something different, whether it was to gain attention for myself or to make people feel sorry for me. Again, who knows, but it's important to look at all the possibilities. So I created this thing for myself, and any thought that you create, you can uncreate. It takes a lot of work to change the way your brain is wired, but you can do it. There's a great saying, uh, and part of the title of my book is A Spiritual and Humorous Approach to Achieving Happiness. And I should explain that spirituality has absolutely nothing to do with religion. Religion can be wonderful for people, but it tends to divide you. It tends to divide us by putting you into a category, and other people are automatically outside of that category. What spirituality does is it brings us all together, because all it asks is that you believe in a force greater than yourself that is really controlling your life and you could call it nature or the universe or God whatever it is that's comfortable to you I had to I had to realize that if I had created this for myself 
that I could uncreate it. Now my parents had taken me for speech therapy and no one was able to help me. And I dedicated myself to the thought that I was not going to go through my whole life as a stutterer. I was determined to create a cure for myself. And I worked on myself for years because there was nobody to help me. And I was given the grace. And the reason I mentioned spiritual is because there's, there's a very simple prayer. And they, they call it the serenity prayer. And it's grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the most important line, and the wisdom to know the difference. If I wasn't given the grace to have the wisdom to know the difference, I would still be stuttering today because I was able to understand that there was really nothing wrong with me. There are some things in life that you must accept. Certain people are born with certain things that you cannot change. And you must have acceptance for yourself. Accept yourself for who you are because if you can't change it, you have to live with it or else it will drive you crazy. But there are certain things that you can change, and I was given the grace to realize that I didn't have to stutter for the rest of my life, that I was able to create what I consider to be a cure for myself. Now, you've heard me speaking for the last several minutes, and you have not heard me stutter. I no longer stutter. I no longer block on words. I still have the triggers. After all these years, I can still feel nervous in certain situations, but I don't allow myself to stutter. In this country alone, there are more than three million people who stutter, and probably a lot of people who are listening to me right now either know somebody who stutters or has somebody in their family who stutters, and maybe this can help somebody. That's why I'm doing this, and that's why I'm starting with this. Whenever I'm on the radio or TV, and most of my focus is usually about comedy, because that's my background, but when it comes to this, I always appreciate the opportunity to talk about it, because people out there who are suffering with their speech need to know that there is hope for them, that they can get better, and they can improve themselves. And they may not ever be 100% fluent, but they can certainly work for it. It's in their grasp. It's attainable. Because the other spiritual principle is that we're all basically the same. If one person can do it, then everyone can do it. There's no great trick to it. It just takes a lot of work. I was obsessed with stopping stuttering. And I created a technique um, involving things like reading out loud, hearing your voice, using affirmations to reprogram your thinking. I basically changed my mind, which is why my book is called Healing Your Heart by Changing Your Mind. From the time we're kids, every time someone has hurt you in some way or bullied you, or said something nasty to you, or broken a promise to you. It stays inside of you. It lodges in your heart, in your heart chakra. And we keep the, those, I call them heart wounds. We keep them with us. And they affect our self-esteem and our self-confidence. They affect every decision that we make. Because all our decisions are based on our thoughts. And some of our thoughts are faulty. Some of our thoughts are based on misinformation that was given to us by strangers who didn't care about us, who were mean to us, who said things that hurt our feelings. And we believe them to some degree, and we base our self-worth on those messages sometimes. So it's very important that we develop a clear picture of ourselves, learning our good points as well as our weaknesses, and honoring those things. So it's a long process, but it's a worthwhile process. It's a process of getting to know yourself and building up self-confidence and self-esteem to the point where you understand that you no longer need to stutter. And one of my great gifts and one of my, my personal greatest accomplishments is that I was able to conquer stuttering and now I work with stutterers and I teach them how not to stutter, uh, which is, it's a wonderful thing for me to see people get better and to, to see them go on with their lives because people who stutter very often tend not to pursue their dreams. They don't get the jobs they want. They don't have the social interactions that they would like. Very often they become shy and introverted. And um, it doesn't have to be that way. So anyway, this is the first of a series of videos that I'm going to be making for this channel, my happiness channel. I truly believe that everybody deserves to be happy and there are ways that we can do that. And as we progress, 
each week or each time I do a video, I'm going to put something up that I think will be helpful to people. The takeaway from today is that you can change your thought, that you don't have to stay stuck in the way you are right now, and that to understand that some of your thoughts are not valid. Just because you created the thought doesn't make it true. It's the same as feelings. Not all feelings are facts. You know, all your feelings may be valid, but they're not necessarily facts. So it's important to understand that. We're going to be talking a lot about how to change a thought, how to start your day, how to create your own happiness center, a whole bunch of things that we're going to be talking about as the weeks go on. And hopefully we'll be able to start a dialogue where I'll be able to answer questions from you. And so I hope you'll subscribe to the channel, leave some comments, and tell, tell a few friends about it, okay? So I hope to talk to you soon. Have a great day, and I wish you lots of happiness.